honestly i can't believe this is happening it's been four years and i'm gonna try at the best of my abilities to capture this experience to bring you with me to Medjugorje. i'm in istanbul right now so i'm actually flying to croatia first and the thing that we usually do is that we either drive from dubrovnik or from split this time i'm heading to split so i have a little layover in the capital of croatia which is zagreb and then from zagreb i'm flying to split in split i'm actually meeting some family friends and we're meeting with a group that is going into the Medjugorje peregrination from split in croatia we're actually driving to bosnia and herzegovina because there is no better way to reach Medjugorje than coming from either dubrovnik or split it is about two and a half hours to three hours driving the thing with Medjugorje is that if you come on your own you're not going to be able to experience it fully so the best is for you to come in and organize pilgrimage. I'm actually coming for the youth festival, which happens once a year. So that happens from the first week of August to the 6th of August. But we come two days early, so that way we can catch up here, like adjust to make sure that we get everything. So for example, for me that I'm traveling with lots of food allergies, that will be going to the supermarket, getting like veggies, getting fruits, getting seeds, or getting like the little things that I need to make sure that they enjoy. Well, that the stay is going to be enjoyable. All right, to start off, we are in Community Senaculo, La Comunidad Senaculo. So basically, this is the home of people who have had an addiction, but they've been able to overcome it through prayer. It is impossible to take videos or take pictures inside or record the audio, as the stories are very personal. But this is one place that you can come, and actually, I think it's a must visit. I've been here before, and the speech, from these people that live here that they work and they have been able to heal through prayer, prayer really moves you so it is beautiful it's kind of like you know still like in the middle of nowhere like very peaceful afterwards we headed to the castle of patrick and nancy where we gathered to hear their testimony of conversion to catholicism but before we hear it let me share some thoughts so we just got out of the testimonies from the cenaculo they were beautiful. It's really nice to see how these guys that were lost in drugs were able to revert their lives through prayer, heal, and now be testimony for others of the love of God. So the last guy who spoke actually spoke to me because he mentioned how he was lost the first time and he came to Mayugori. He was able to heal from his addiction and then he went back into the world he got a job, he got a girlfriend that he was about to marry, he actually had a place to call home. So he was doing pretty good in life and he kept telling himself that he was that fine, that he was no longer a drug addict. So he started to build this barrier, this wall that pretended that everything was perfect in his life when he knew that he was still empty, like there was still like a missing piece. So he said the first time that he came to Mayugori, he wasn't able to get deep into his faith. And then as he realized that there was something else missing, he relapsed. So he went back again onto doing drugs and he even almost committed suicide. So after many experiences inside a hospital and realizing that he was just suffering and damaging the lives of those living with him, he realized that the only place where he could actually find some peace and be able to heal was Mayugori. So he came for a second time, funny enough. As he's speaking, obviously I haven't dealt with drugs, but in my case, I've been lost. I've been lost in my life. I've had everything I always wanted, yet I felt empty. I felt like there was still a missing piece and I gave up everything to see if new doors could open, if I could make a living doing something else, if I could change my life. And still, I feel like there's something missing. So as he's speaking, I'm like, isn't it funny that I'm also here on my second time and I think the first time that I came to Mayugori, I wasn't able to get deep into my faith because I'm still missing something. And I'm just getting to leave it right now. So maybe within these next few days, if I open myself to the opportunity of 
being loved and hearing and not being afraid because this is something he mentioned that he's afraid of finding out why he's in Mayugori again and I'm literally afraid to find out why I'm in Mayugori this time again. With that in mind, let me share a snippet of the testimony of Patrick and Nancy. I don't know what happened. No sé qué, qué, qué es lo que pasó en ese momento. Es que ese mensaje penetró mi corazón. When I read that message, Cuando leí ese mensaje, I haven't been inside the church for 30 years, 40 years. No había estado yo en la iglesia, dentro de la iglesia, por 30, 40 años. My son said to me, mi hijo me dice a mí, Dad, Dad, Papá, Dad, when I saw you with the rosary in your hand, te he visto a ti con el rosario en la mano, Dad, when I saw you pray, Papá, cuando te he visto a ti rezar, Dad, it changed my life forever. Eso cambió mi vida para siempre. And what is our goal? What is our future? Una bienvenida y qué es nuestra meta, qué es nuestro futuro? Heaven. El paraíso del cielo. Can we have a fear of heaven? Uh, Podemos uh, tener miedo del cielo. No. No. Wow, those words of Nancy. Didn't I say earlier that I was afraid of being back in Meijugori? When Meijugori has been called heaven on earth, why should I even be afraid? After the testimony, we headed to Mass. Even though it looks a little crowded, let me remind you this is probably a third of the people that are going to show up to the festival. We'll see tomorrow. Meijugori, which in Croatian means in between the mountains, it was a tiny village in the old Yugoslavia. It wasn't relevant and known as it is now. This all changed on June 24, 1981, when the Virgin Mary appeared to six local kids to deliver peace and conversion on messages. As we're hiking the mountain of apparitions, where Our Lady first appeared to the six visionaries, I couldn't help but wonder, is this how they felt? Right at the end, you can see the figure of a woman, but you're unable to see it clearly until you get close to it. Nowadays, believers come and pray to Our Lady. They reflect with her. But it wasn't this easy, especially for the six visionaries. When Our Lady first appeared, it was during the Yugoslavia Wars. She came with a message of peace. Mir, 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 which in Croatian means peace, peace, peace. She came to announce that the war was expanding and the only way to fight it was through prayer and fasting. The visionaries were persecuted. They had a really hard time. Authorities didn't believe them. And they tried to stop them several times from being able to see Our Lady. But Our Lady was kind and she protected them over and over with an army of priests and believers that protected and truly understood her messages of praying, fasting, and asking for conversion. Imagine every day since the June 24, 1981, she's been appearing in this town. This is the town that she chose to continue her messages from Fatima. So as you can see, even though it's in the middle of nowhere and it doesn't have access to the resources that we're accustomed to, it is very peaceful. It has a something that your soul needs, that your soul is actually looking for. The fruits of Medjugorje is one of my favorite stories to tell. This terrain, in fact, was used to grow tobacco back in the days. When Our Lady started to appear and the town believed on her messages, they decided to donate the best terrain in the area to the church so they can build one where everyone could gather in community to listen to her messages. What they didn't expect is how much Meyugori was going to grow. It was going to become known worldwide and people from all over the world were gonna come to seek for forgiveness, to seek for love and validation from God. The fruits of Meyugori, in fact, are unmeasurable. Everyone that comes here ends up living with a heart full of love and peace to be able to join the regular activities and be light to others that encounter them on a regular basis. I love coming to the church before the festival starts because it's empty. But now it's a good time to tell you that I'm going to represent El Salvador. So it is time to go pick up the flag. The festival starts with worship music and the flag ceremony.
El Salvador. All the nationalities that have gone to the festival are represented here. Nicaragua. In our case, for our group, we represented three. Svetska, Sweden. Didn't I say that that was only a third of the people that were going to show up? Look at this church. How amazing it is to see everyone gather to worship God. Following the flag ceremony, nowadays we receive a letter from Pope Francis and then Mass follows. We need radios to understand, as it is in Croatian, but um, service is being translated to nine languages. Even though Mass is celebrated in every evening of the festival, it always looks different. On this night, every person brings a candle. They start to light them up from the front all the way to the back. It is a reminder that we can illuminate the darkness. We're full of dreams, hopes, values, and purpose. But when life gets challenging, we find ourselves in trouble. And that trouble dims our light. So don't let anyone take it away from you. God chose you to live in this moment. When things get hard, pray. And when things are good, pray. Pray constantly to keep this light on. On another night, we have a procession where two people of each nationality carry the sign and the flag of their countries following Our Lady. This is a symbol that we have received the message of peace, that we now understand what Our Lady asks from us so we have to all take that message back to our home countries. The voice you hear in the back is in Croatian, but the message can be translated and heard from our radios. It was to encourage the youth to don't be afraid to follow Our Lady's steps, just like she did, and accept her God's will. We can all do the same. I know life is going to get hard when we welcome God into our lives, but with Him on it, it will be bearable. And every challenge that we encounter, if we offer it to Him, He'll help us get through it and grow from it. Do you remember the guys from Comunidad Cenáculo? Well, before COVID times, they used to show a play, but because they weren't certain if the festival was going to take place or not, they went ahead and filmed a movie. Giuseppe. In this movie, they show us how Mary and Joseph fell in love, how Mary listened to God's will, and how they raised Jesus. As the saying goes, everything good comes to an end. We end the festival with another flag ceremony and now, even though we're not ready to go home, we have to go home to share the good news of Mary and the love of God. Honestly, every time you come to Mayugori, you live with something new. Every time is a different experience and now it is time to head out, sadly. But I'm going to reflect upon getting home and I'm going to tell you my experience and what I learned here. 
Oh my goodness, where do I even start? I've been to Medjugorje twice. The first time I went to Medjugorje was back in 2017. I went because I had to fulfill a promise. Listen carefully to how I'm using my words. I said I had. And the verb to have, it means that there is an obligation for you to do so. So back in 2016, I went to London to study my master's in economic development at the London School of Economics. It was one big dream I had, but obviously I haven't been raised in a rich family. So as much money as I could accumulate, it was going to be impossible for me to attend this university. I pray and I put it on my intentions and I asked the Virgin Mary to please bless me. I remember taking my denary at the time, it looked like this one that I have here, but pink. So I remember grabbing it and I said, if you give me $40,000, I promise I'm going to thank you and I will go to Medjugorje. <laughs> how dangerous or, or how blessed, you know, like <laughs> those words. Couple of months later, Guess what? I won a $30,000 scholarship, a $5,000 scholarship. I sold my card and combined, I ended up having $42,000 to study in London that whole year. I had the money I asked for. 2016, I spent it in school. 2017, as I was getting ready to leave and be thankful for the year that I had, I remember my promise and I'm like, I have to go to Mayogori. I have to go thank the Virgin Lady, uh, the Virgin Mary, sorry. <laughs> I have to go thank the Virgin Mary for having blessed me with, with this experience. So I reached out to family friends and I told them, is there a way that you guys could show me how to go to Mayogori because I have to go. And they're like, well, we're actually going. So if you would like to, we can take you with us. Uh, we're going to be renting this hotel. We're going to do this pilgrimage. We're going to do this, that, that, and is this much money? And I'm like, okay. So I paid for that. I went, I flew all the way to Split. And then from Split, I met them over there and we dropped to Bosnia and Herzegovina. As I showed in the video, you have to go through one of the ports and then um, that it's easier to get to Mayugore because you don't have like an airport nearby. So we drove for two hours and 30 minutes and then we got to Mayugore. First time I went, I like, I knew little things like, I grew up Catholic, I was raised Catholic, I went to a Catholic school. I didn't practice my religion at the time, I was, I was dealing, I don't even think I had faith. Or maybe I had like a little bit, a little bit of faith left. I had just lost myself in this world that that I'm used to getting everything this quick and then when it comes to praying when it comes to asking God for things you don't see them immediately so that was just that just wasn't my world you know so first time in Medjugorje I honestly had a really hard time because I went to Medjugorje as a non-believer so non-believer even though I am Catholic. It means that you actually don't pray, you don't go to church, you don't have God in the center of your life. You have actually done everything to remove God from your decisions and you're not considering Him whatsoever. So even though you call yourself Catholic, if you don't practice it on a daily basis, if you don't pray, if you don't try to seek for His love on a daily basis, you are a non-believer. That's what I was. I was in a really bad place. So when you go to no, uh, when you go to Medjugorje as a non-believer, things get a little crazy. Let me tell you, Medjugorje is one of these places where you have to go to understand all the craziness and out of the world experiences that you have here. Um, yeah, like. I had a really hard time my first time because I think Our Lady tried her best to make sure that I understood that she existed, that she was actually in Medjugorje, that God existed, 
that I should follow her son. She really showed me like, like the things I saw, I wouldn't have seen them otherwise. And I was very scared. I was honestly very scared. I would have visions. I would like, I went crazy. <laughs> That's one thing I can, I can call it that way. I just, <laughs> it was bad. It was bad, honestly, like, I believe, I believe she was there. I believe there was a God. I try my best to fulfill this, this faith path that I had been introducing my Yugori for a few years after that, but it didn't work out. It just, I still have God in my life and I am super faithful to Our Lady. I call her Mary. I feel like Mary is just my best friend. Every time I have something, I'm like, okay, Mary, like, please help me out with this. And immediately I get it like this. And I'm like, whoa, like you are awesome. You're like sent from heaven. Like literally she lives in heaven, you know? <laughs> uh, but like we have an amazing relationship with her after May Gori. She's just, she's been interceding for me every now and then, like, I have her with me. I, I can feel her and I see her in little things and little blessings that I know that she has sent my way through her son. But even though I had her, after going to Medjugorje, I think for the first six months I will pray the rosary on a daily basis. And then I understood the world and I'm like, no one prays the rosary anymore. No one goes to church. You are so busy trying to catch up with life that you leave God behind. And that happened. I got depressed. I was really sad. I had this job that didn't fulfill me and I had no idea why was I doing it? Why would I thank God for having a job that I don't like? Why would I say, God, thank you for having me in this place even though it doesn't fulfill me even though I don't feel happy. I know you're using it to get to others. I couldn't say that. I was just miserable. I had taken God out of my center and I was like encountering the world again, sat in a buried relationship, in a relationship that didn't have faith as a pioneer, as, as a rock. Then after I like hit, I mean, I hit um, rock bottom. That's how you call it. I hit rock bottom. But before I did that, back in 2018, no, actually 2019, back in 2019, my aunt was going to my Yugori. So I thought, I'm not happy anymore. I'll send a letter. I'm gonna send a lady to, I'm gonna send a letter to our lady and I'm gonna ask her to change my life. And that's it. So I brought in the letter. I'm sad. I'm just miserable with the life I have. Please help me change it. I don't like my job. I don't feel loved by the partner I have. I'm not healthy. <laughs> I keep going to the hospital and they don't know what I have. And I'm just sick. And I want to feel healthy. I want, I want a life change. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I told myself I was not going to cry. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> these sort of things make you emotional. So, 2020, no, actually like, no, I'm bad with my dates. <laughs> so that was late 2018, actually, late 2018, that's what it was. And then 2019, April, guess what? We discovered I was allergic. So I was allergic to gluten, soy, eggs, dairy. <laughs> Allergic to all the things that I didn't want to eat, but I had a hard time eating. I had a hard time giving them up. 
and I wanted a life change. I wanted to change my lifestyle, but it was so complicated to do so on my own. And this is how it happened. I I was allergic to other things. I was allergic to nuts already, to peanuts, uh, to chickpeas, to lentils, to peas, to sesame seeds. Um, I had already avoided eating meat. And I was actually a pescatarian at the time. So I was trying my best to like change my lifestyle and feel a little better. Because let me tell you, I just had like an awful experience with my health. And at the time I didn't understand why I was allergic. I was so mad. I'm like, God, like, why will you give me this many allergies? Like, I cannot eat anything. I mean, I want a cheesecake. I can have it. I want brownies. I can't have them. I want like tortillas. I can't have anything. I'm like, I'm super allergic to everything that, that exists in this world. Then what do I eat? So I started to cook and everything just came naturally to, to me. Like started exploring, started testing, experimenting a lot with food, with spices. And food was just working out, like, I was creating things. And I was fascinated that, by the fact that through all these plant-based recipes, I was healing myself. I wasn't expecting it, but I got the lifestyle change I wanted. And then in 2020, I was so ready. I'm like, okay, I don't like this job anymore. And I have found my passion. I think I belong to this world and I, I'm i one person that can tell others who have food allergies or who want to live a healthy lifestyle despite having autoimmune conditions that they can do so, they can travel, they can eat healthy food, they can eat desserts, they can eat whatever they want without the allergens, without the things that trigger their autoimmune responses. And I quit my job and I dedicated my life to create recipes, to create content, relationship went out the window and I'm really happy that it did. So I got my wish more than I could have ever prayed for. Like the life I have right now, it's a blessing. And I think a lot of people can, can be staring at me, looking at me like crazy right now, like thinking, why will you call the allergies a blessing? But like, they have made me special. They have given me the life I wanted and they can potentially give me way more than I would have ever expected from my life. And it's all thanks to God, all thanks to Him. So, second time in Medjugorje, I go with a new life. I've been in Istanbul for a couple of months now with a job, I will regularly not be able to do this. Like, do you pack your bags and move to Istanbul for two months with a job? No, you can't. You really can't do something like this. And it's truly a blessing to live the life that I have. And it's just starting. This is just the beginning. And it has been such a great journey that I cannot wait to see all the doors that are going to open after, you know. I know it's going to be a great life. And... As long as I put it to the service of others, as long as I don't have myself at the center, but I actually lead, let God lead me and let him speak through me, I know I'm going to be able to bless many lives here in this world. So second time in Medjugorje, I go again. I wouldn't say as a non-believer because I pray, but I will just say, not a faithful one, not like a responsible one, not like one who seeks God all the time, even when she's happy. Like, I feel like if I'm happy, I'm just, I'm happy. I don't like sit down and pray and say like, thank you God, because I'm happy. No, I don't do these things. So I go to Medjugorje the second time, already knowing that the Virgin Mary appears here. But this time I got confused and I'm like, why will you call me again? Haven't I been good? I was actually a little, I had a little resentment because I'm like, you already called me once. You already had me here once. 
And the first time I went, because I had to go, it was my obligation to go. The second time that I went, it was a need. My soul needed it. I needed to be there. I needed to like hear the message again. I needed to fully understand what does God want from me? And Our Lady, as the most beautiful, gorgeous, peaceful woman, mother she is, she knew that the only way that I could listen to this message was if she took me again to Mayugori. So that's why I went to Mayugori again. I was really afraid and I was a little angry because I'm like, why don't you take other people? Like, why will you take me? Like, I already pray, you know? I just don't go to mass every weekend, you know? Some days I remember and others I forget. But I'm doing better than last time. I mean, I pray. I pray before every meal. I pray when I wake up. I pray when I go to bed. Obviously, my relationship is so much better than the first time I went to my ward. So why will you take me a second time? You know what? Because Mary wanted to give me a gift. She actually wanted to give me Jesus. Because the first time I went, I met her. But I didn't meet her son. I didn't meet Jesus. I didn't meet or understood the love God has for me. Until now. I went a second time and, and Meijugori was very spiritual this time. So nothing weird happened to me like the first time. No out of the world experiences this time. Because as I mentioned, I already had God in my life. I already knew Mary was there. I already knew what I was going for. And I was a little scared because I'm like, I know that if I'm going again, it's for a reason. But everything that I'm taking away from me, you worry, is that God has this unmeasurable, unmeasurable, I think it's the word, unmeasurable love for each one of us. And if you seek for his love on good and on bad days, nothing is ever going to make you sad. Nothing. You're just going to be fulfilled with the good times and the painful times. You're going to understand that God is using them to get through others. If you don't experience pain, like for example, if I wouldn't have all these allergies, I wouldn't be able to pray for people that have allergies. I wouldn't be able to create content for people that have allergies. I relate to them because I have them. So if you don't go through pain, you cannot relate to humanity. Everyone has to experience pain. Everyone has to experience some sort of uncertainty in your life because that makes us human. And we're not perfect. But with God, our lives can be a little heaven, a little gift from what our life in the future, in eternity, is going to look like. So what I wanted to tell you to conclude this message and to conclude my experience in Mayugori is that I have been very blessed to go for a second time. And actually this time, I think Mary allowed me to understand that she wants to take my faith deeper. That she wants me to pray this beautiful, powerful tool every day that she wants me to pray for non-believers. She wants me to pray for my family. She wants me to pray for my friends. She wants me to pray for my talents to be used to serve God. She wants me to pray for the sick. She wants me to pray for peace in the world. I can go on. This is not enough. And if you pray with more people, if you share the love of God with more people, and more people pray, we pray the rosary together, we do the things that Our Lady has said to us. Fast. Go to church. Confess. Life is going to start to look good for us, for the people that are near us, for the people even in the purgatory that need our prayers. Those who are near us that don't know God. Through my life, they can now get to know Him. And I couldn't thank Our Lady more for, for this precious gift. And 
before going to Međugorje, I actually wanted to find a guy and I wanted to have a relationship. And I was obsessed with this, that I needed to have a partner. And now I understand that, no, I don't need a partner. I need to find God. I need to have his love. And once I have his love, I can start sharing this love with others. But it's going to take time for me to find this love, for me to feel this love. And I really hope that you guys get to experience it with me, that a little piece that God is giving me, a little love and, and attention and, and the way that he spoils me, it can get to you as well. Oh, like, I'm just happy. I'm just happy that I have met this love and I'm ready to take it. I'm ready to encounter all the issues that are going to come my way because I'm seeking for, for his love. But I wouldn't be able to be here without Our Lady. Our Lady is the one that tried to get me through her son. And finally, I can say that she did. This time for sure she did. First time in Međugorje was very superficial. Second time in Međugorje, we're going to infinity. Literally, we're going to heaven.